just a side note, the historicity of the Qur'an, the historical integrity of the Qur'an, Haman. You know who Haman is in the Qur'an? He's the minister, or one of the ministers of who? Of Fir'aun. Haman is mentioned in the Qur'an about six times. And Allah tells us about Haman, that Fir'aun commanded him to build him a tower. Fir'aun commanded him to build him a tower. Now, is there a mention of a Haman in the Bible? Sure. Is there a mention of Haman building a tower? Sure. But the Haman in the Bible didn't work for Fir'aun. He worked for another king named Xerxes in the biblical book of Esther. So the biblical uh, Catholic scholars in the 1600s who were first getting into Orientalist studies, Islamic studies, they looked this thing up in the Qur'an and they said, Aha! We found a mistake in the Qur'an. Look! They're talking about Haman working under Fir'aun while the book of Esther tells us that Haman worked under the king named Xerxes a thousand years after the Pharaoh in Babylon, not even in Egypt, and he built them a tower. You ever heard of the story, the Tower of Babylon? So they challenged the histor historical integrity of the Qur'an. Ma'adullah, they said from the disbeliever's point of view, oh, Muhammad must have plagiarized it from a priest and made a mistake because he mixed up the story of the Tower of Babel, right? And the story of Xerxes with the story of the Pharaoh and he's confused between the two of them. That's what he did. Misquotation in the Qur'an. What's really interesting is, in the late 1800s, the Catholic scholarship, the, the body of Catholic scholarship, unanimously denied the book of Esther as a valid source of history. They acknowledged their own book, they acknowledged that their own book, unanimously, is legend. Just stories made up, names made up. The Jewish encyclopedia even now tells you the book of Esther has no, no historical value. None whatsoever. But then it remains, this one question remains. The Qur'an tells us that this Qur'an tells Bani Israel about the things that even they disagreed in. Even they disagreed in some stuff and this Qur'an tells them. This speaker is giving this to you. He can't be the speaker then. There's some, this knowledge is coming from somewhere else. Now check this out. You know Maurice Bukhat, is a famous uh, Muslim who wrote Bible, Qur'an and science. Before he got into that subject, he was a historian. He wanted to study Islamic history. When he came across this problem presented by Catholic priests, he did a little research. You see what happened in the late 1800s was, uh, the Egyptian hieroglyphics were now being revived as a language. Because hieroglyphics had died about almost 2,000 years before the Prophet Egyptian hieroglyphics had died as a language. And they were revived by German and French scholars. The study is called Egyptology. They traveled to Egypt, they studied the hieroglyphics, and they developed a scheme of you know, spelling those images and turning them into a pronounceable words and all this stuff. Okay? It started about 120, 130 years ago. So they got into this study. And they made documentations of who the ministers that are mentioned in the, the documents of the Egyptians, what their roles were, etc., etc. Maurice travels to France, goes to an Egyptologist and asks him, by the way, in your records, did you see any name Haman? And he says, well, I wouldn't know you have to go to Germany, but where did you get the name Haman? He said, well, there's a messenger, a man who claims to be a messenger, in the 7th century, who says that there was a minister of Pharaoh, whose name was what? Haman. And he built, told him to build a tower. He said, that's impossible. Nobody could have had access to any names from that time, because the language has already died at the Prophet's time for how long already? 2,000 years. So he travels to Germany to look up the names of different architects and constructors and ministers under the name, uh, under the Pharaoh, specifically under the Pharaoh at the time of historical era of Musa salam, of Moses. What does he find? Haman, minister of the stone quarries, construction. This name is discovered in the 1900s. The tau the, they actually have a statue in Austria, I believe. Haman written on it underneath, they revived it from Egypt, his name is Haman, in Austria, the statue is sitting there. Now we don't know for sure if that's the Haman of, 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 you know, of the Qur'an, but still the name exists. The fact that he's in charge of construction exists, and this is something they didn't have, but which speaker had? The Messenger of Allah, but actually the speaker is who then? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.